Hello and welcome to Who Is Best, a show where I, Lo Claudine, take games that give you choices and rate those choices in a tier list. And we have some choices to be made. Today we'll be examining Suicoden 2, the PlayStation classic that has dazzled JRPG enthusiasts for years. Now we're going to tackle this the same way we did Suicoden 5. We'll just be considering the party members you can use in battle. This leaves us with about 72 characters to rate. We'll be looking at stats, rune slots, and fixed runes, as well as overall usefulness and accessibility throughout the game, including the end game. As is common with these games, a certain rune setup can break the battle system. In the case of Suicoden 2, that setup is Fury Rune, Double Strike, and Double Beat Rune. Magic is useful, but it doesn't beat this setup in the slightest. Now, I'll be moving through these quick since we have so many, but I'll try to focus on the most important aspects of each character to justify their placement on this list. And without further ado, I give you the sh** tier. Tuda has the worst stats in everything other than speed, so he sucks fast. The flying squirrels suck, and Muku Muku may be the worst of the lot. Stallion is the fastest character in the game, which again means that he can suck really fast. Hoi has high accuracy, which pairs well with his inability to damage anything. The Low Tier Freed E, or Freed Y, whatever, has low stats all around and really just shouldn't be used. Kinnison fits into a bow group niche and can unite with the other bow users to do some decent damage, but ultimately he isn't worth using. Shiloh is about as generic a long range character as you're going to get and is pretty much here as a filler. Yoshino is a low tier spear wielder and probably won't see much action in your party unless you like the way she looks. Bulgin, like the others, is a fairly useless character whose unite attack hurts himself and the party. Meg is a low tier long range mage with the inability to do anything useful other than pairing with gadget. Siegfried is the weakest of the monsters and takes up two party slots, which when considering who all lands in the upper tiers makes him even worse. Despite Tsai's usefulness in strategy combat, he is pretty useless in battle. He's slightly worse than Tomo, which says a lot. Millie is decent early on in the game as she unlocks her rune slots very fast, but very, very quickly becomes useless as her attack, defense, HP, and tech all take a huge nosedive. When comparing Sasuke to Mondo and Kasumi, his placement in the low tier becomes evident. He's long range but lacks any stats that would make this useful. If you want a monster build for your team, then Bado's Unite attacks complement this strategy. Seeing as it's one of the poor strategies in the game, I'd suggest leaving him in the low tier where he belongs. Bob in human form is abysmal, and after one turn he can turn into a werewolf, which is uh, okay. Kabocha's stats are all around low, but he has some very unique uses that just barely keep him out of the sh tier. Tayo could probably rate higher, though his specific runes are crappy, and he takes up a space that really should be given to a better character. His high attack and range with his spear do help him to be somewhat useful, but not much. Vincent's HP and defense makes his place as a frontline fighter questionable. He certainly can put out some damage, but he's so squishy that you'll need full-time support on him. Shin is comparable to Genshu, just weaker. He has a decent Unite skill and his rune can be good, but his defense is horrible and like Vincent, will need some support to stay alive. Hicks takes up a pivotal frontline spot and because of this probably just shouldn't be used. There are way too many better knights out there. Koyu is versatile, which ultimately makes him not the best at anything. Gintetsu is a mage with above average attack and defense and below average magic, so yeah. He has three rune slots, which by default makes him slightly useful, but not by much. Though Vicky's ability to warp is insanely useful, her magic stat surprisingly isn't as good as other mages, which really undercuts her in battle. Nina makes for an average support mage, which means she's outclassed by a lot of other characters on this list. Okay, so we'll be breaking the mid-tier into two parts, so let's start with the lower mid-tier. Hana, despite her muscular physique, is average at best. 
With Ulan, she can perform an all enemy attack, but it leaves her disbalanced, which is dumb. Shiro is insanely strong, but incredibly squishy. You need to make sure he has his own dedicated healer to help keep him effective. But if you have that, he might just reach the upper tiers. Gengen has average stats with great tech. He's perfect for the beginning of the game and possibly mid game, but drops off towards end game. Amada has high HP and decent strength. His combined attack with Rikimaru is good, but not amazing. Gadget is a tank with decent attack power as well. Unfortunately, his Unite attack is paired with Meg, who is a waste of character space. Sierra's major flaw is that she's a front row mage, which ultimately makes her useless. If she had better defense, then maybe she would be better, but her placement holds her back. Ada is probably the best archer in the game, but unfortunately archers aren't good to begin with, so this isn't saying much. Karen is a mid-range jack-of-all-trades that unfortunately doesn't excel at anything other than being a hot dancer. She does have two unfixed rune slots, which is useful. Rikimaru is one of the beginning powerhouses that gets replaced by much better characters around the halfway point, but during the beginning hours, he's almost indispensable. Zamza is a slow but decent mage capable of putting out some good damage. Hauser is a above average frontliner with good strength, though he is lacking in defense, which can be troublesome. Tomo is the best spear user in the game. If combined with Sai, she might be pushed into the upper mid tier. The final member of the lower mid tier is Fitch, who is a back row attacker with above average stats and everything except for HP and defense, which makes him pretty squishy. The upper mid tier. Abysboa is your best monster character in the game. If that's the route you want to take, then he is your um, octopus. But be warned, his speed and tech are abysmal. Genshu is all around above average and a pretty good party member. Combining him with Shin makes him even better. Ellie would be top tier if she got a forehead rune. She is a really good long range mage, but unfortunately lacks the rune capabilities. Like Genshu and Ellie, Lorelei is an all around good character. With a little time, she is highly viable for an endgame party. Lo Wen is similar to Clive with one big difference. She hardly multi-hits. She dishes out some massive damage from the back row, but her low skill makes it so it's one, maybe two hits at most. Miklatov, Camus, and Flick make a very deadly pair with an awesome unite attack, though if alone, Miklatov probably is the least effective of the three. Use them together or pass on him entirely. Even without Hana's unite attack, Olan is a beefy front row fighter. She has high defense, HP, and attack power, as well as defends fairly well against magic attacks. Mazes is one of the most powerful mages you will receive in this game. Unfortunately, he's also obtained very, very late in the game. Most likely, he'll be the last character you receive. He also has two locked runes, though both are fairly useful. Mondo is complemented by Kasumi being in the party, though he is a much lesser ninja all around. His Mayfly rune is fairly useless, and his speed and accuracy just simply hold him back from truly shining. Khan is your optimal support mage, with a resurrection rune to begin with. He can carry your characters through most of the game if you stop on a flowing and water rune. Nanami might be one of the best characters in the game. She's well balanced with an insane speed stat. Also, she'll be required for much of Suicoden 2. The issue is that you can't use her in the end game, which explains her placement in this tier. The final member of the upper mid tier is Hayo. Hayo has three open rune slots, which allows him to be pretty much broken, but unfortunately he has just absolutely horrible stats overall. The top tier. Luke is one of the best mages in the game and can take a place in the back row for any team. He has high magic stat and is incredibly fast. Simone's only real weakness is his defense and rune slots, but he is a back row fighter, so this isn't that bad of a handicap. Elsie Chan with Fury Rune is one of your best DPS tanks. He has high HP and can hit like a truck. Kasumi is easily one of my favorite characters. She's also the best ninja in the game. She has low defense and HP for a front row fighter, but this is mitigated by awesome speed and accuracy, which should keep her from getting hit often. The real issue with Kasumi is the conditions for obtaining her. She's pitted against Valeria, which sucks because ultimately Valeria is a better character. 
Camus is one of the better frontliners on this list. Mixed with Miklatov and Flick just makes him deadly. His fixed rune isn't very useful overall, but that hardly holds him back. Clive is your best long range fighter overall. Lo Wen might have him beat in damage potential, but Clive's multi hit ability is just too awesome. Chaco has three open rune slots, which makes him a perfect candidate for the insane rune combo Fury Rune, Double Beat Rune, and Double Strike Rune. This allows him to be one of your biggest damage dealers. Sid is in the same boat as Chaco, with his three rune slots and ability to attack from any row makes him a deadly damage dealer. Gijimu's physical stats are amazing, and overall he could easily be in any endgame team. He has a double beat rune and powerful weapons that just accent his usefulness as well. Tengar and Rina might as well be palette swaps with each other. They both can hand out insane amount of magic damage and are both excellent party members overall. Unfortunately, Rina has that third rune slot, making her just slightly better. Humphrey with a spark rune becomes the undisputed champion of tanks. High HP, defense, and attack land him squarely in the middle of the top tier. Wakaba and LC Chan make a deadly combination. Alone, Wakaba might be better, but together they make a completely insane duo of characters. Fairy runes turn these two into damage dealing gods. Rina gets her forehead rune at level 35, so she has three rune slots very early on, and will probably be one of the most dependable mages throughout your playthrough. She's squishy, but so are most other mages. Slap a spark rune on Pesmerga and watch your enemies cower. He really has no other weaknesses other than speed and rune slots. Like I said before, you have to choose between Kasumi and Valeria at one point in the game and Valeria is easily the better choice, mainly because of her falcon rune combined with runes like the fury rune. She is a crazy good front row fighter who shouldn't be passed up. Of course, if you're into hot ninjas, then you just might do that. George is a series staple and always places high on any list. He comes over leveled with awesome stats and possibly the second best physical attacker in the game, though he has no open rune slots, which hurts him in the end. Flick is one of the most consistent companions for the hero in the story. He gets two level four magic slots and belongs on your endgame team. Victor is simply the best. He beats out George and Pesmerga and everything which lands him in the top tier, no questions asked. Sheena is much better in Suicode 2 than he was in 1. He was barely edged out of the god tier by sheer ability of everyone that comes after, but he's still one of the best party members in the game. He has 3 open rune slots and the ability to equip shields. The God Tier McDole is the hero from the first game and if you import your data from there, you will receive him in game. He's perfectly balanced and can pretty much do anything you need. Killy can defeat the final boss in one hit. That's his potential. He has three open rune slots as well as an open rune slot in his weapon. He is simply the best. The fury and double beat runes on this guy just breaks the game completely. The final member of the god tier is the hero. He's one of the fastest in the game with comparable attack to Victor and George as well as magic dealing potential that rivals the best mages in the game. On top of this, he has healing capabilities and gets three rune slots very early on. And I guess you're required to use them, so yeah, god tier. Anyway, that's my list. I'm losing my voice. Be sure to let me know in the comments below what your endgame team was, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe.